Hi, my friends. This is Brother Sam with our Handfuls of Purpose video series. I'm so glad to be with you today. I pray that you're doing well and God's moving in your life and that you're open to hearing a fresh word from the Lord today. I do believe I have something from the Lord, else I wouldn't bring it. But uh, in Psalms 137, I want to speak to you today about where are you living? Where am I living? Am I living in Babylon? Or am I living in Zion? Babylon and Zion are two different places. Zion is the place of God. It's the place where the heart of God is uh, meets the heart of man. It's the place where we enthrone God upon our hearts. And he literally comes in his manifest presence and dwells with us. It's called Zion. Zion's a mountain. It's a place. It's a people. But it's also a place in the spirit where God comes and dwells in a high, high praise and worship and visits with his people. That's Zion. Are we dwelling there or are we dwelling in Babylon? Babylon means confusion. They don't know what they're doing. And they certainly don't have God's manifest presence. I want to first talk about Babylon, if I can, real quickly here in Psalms 137. Just let me read to you this. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning, and so on. But I want you to hear these words. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Here, Israel had been taken captive by its enemies, and their enemies were Babylon. Babylon is the enemy of God. You know, the scriptures speak of two women, the church and the harlot. There's the bride and the false queen. In Revelation. But I want you to know that while Babylon is growing ever and ever and ever and even infiltrating charismatic circles, and let me give a little push for my book Mystery Babylon. We have an entire book, several hundred pages, written on, it's called Mystery Babylon. It's written about Babylon and the charismatic church today. All you have to do is contact me and we'd be glad to uh, talked about sending it to you, and you can study it more thoroughly. It took us about almost a year to write that book as we studied it. But the reason I wrote it is God spoke to me and said, my people don't realize that the spirit of Babylon is the spirit of Antichrist, and that the spirit of Antichrist is now living in the charismatic church. What do you mean, Brother Sam? I'm talking about all of these seeker-friendly churches that claim to have the Holy Spirit but don't allow people to pray in tongues, that don't allow people to sing in the Spirit, that don't allow people to prophesy. That's anti the anointing. That's anti-Christ. I'm sorry, you may be going to one of those churches right now, but you're living in Babylon. You're living in confusion. You can't sing the Lord's song in that strange land. God's manifest presence isn't going to come down there. And let me tell you why. In Revelations 18, let me just read to you what God himself says. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen. And let me say to you that Babylon is falling. I know it seems like these churches are springing up everywhere and they're, they have thousands and thousands of members and 
little churches that have the glory and have the anointing, they just seem to be small and insignificant. Don't you dare think like that. God has always done things through a remnant of people, through a small group of people. The Bible says God saveth not by many or by few. He told Gideon 32,000 is way too many. Break it down. So they went to 10,000. He said it's still too many. It got down to 300 faithful men. God does not take pleasure, Solomon says, in the legs of a man. He doesn't need our talents. He just needs our faithfulness and our willingness. But hear me. Babylon in all of its glory with their big buildings and their golf carts and all their great children's ministries and all the things that they provide for people, all the little creature comforts, the padded pews and the, you know, the, the suppers and all the stuff that they do for you. Where's Jesus in it? Are you growing in the Lord? Are you prospering in God? Or are you living in a strange land? I'm telling you, Babylon is falling because God has spoken it. He's prophesied it. Babylon is fallen and is become, listen to this, the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's what God says about Babylon. And he goes on to say in verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Well, to come out of her, that means you've got to be in her. Come out of her, my people, my people, my people, come out of her, Babylon, the strange land, my people. Be ye not partakers of her sins, and you will not, you'll not receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Let me tell you, God does not take pleasure in people making light of the Holy Ghost. And I've never been so upset or so hurt as I see now that the Holy Spirit in speaking in tongues has been relegated to almost nothing. Nobody ever sings in the Spirit anymore on CDs. Singing in the Spirit seems to be a lost art. Prophesying in the midst of the congregation seems to be a forgotten thing because everything happens on the platform now because it's a show. It's a professional show now. That's living in a strange land. 1 Corinthians 14 says, Every one of you hath a psalm, a tongue, a doctrine. When you come together, this is the way church ought to be. 1 Corinthians 14 is the way how to conduct a Holy Ghost meeting. And he says, let the prophets speak one by one that all may learn and be comforted. Where are the prophets prophesying today? The pastors won't let them. They control things from the pulpit. It's Babylon. It's the cage of every foul and hateful and unclean bird. There are evil spirits there that are anti the anointing. Oh, yes, Jesus is there. Because Jesus is everywhere his people are, and his people are in Babylon. But he's pleading now, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, so that you won't be a partaker of her plagues. Let me just try to finish by saying this. When, you, when you're sitting and when you're in the rivers of Babylon, instead of the rivers of Zion where the Holy Ghost is moving, the glory's flowing, people are prophesying, people are getting healed, delivered. God is just moving in the midst of the congregation and everybody's involved. Jesus is being glorified. That's the rivers of Zion. Let out of your belly flow a river of living water. That's the Holy Ghost. And I'm sorry, but tongues and the Holy Ghost go together, whether you like it or not. But when you're in Babylon, you sit down. Let me ask you a question. Are you sitting down 
Or are you standing up and moving on in God? Or is somebody else doing all the work for you? Somebody else doing all the singing for you now? When you remember Zion, do you weep? Do you talk about the good old days? Ah, my friend, you can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land. They sing the same songs we do. You see, they watched us. They watched charismatic Pentecostal people. They saw what a blessing it was for the anointing and the glory to come. So now they'll even lift their hands. They'll even clap. You might even hear them say amen and praise the Lord in their meetings. But they're still not filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't speak with tongues, nor do they want to. But they want you. They want your money. They want you to come to their church. And when you do that, what you're doing is robbing Zion and Zion's churches of your presence, your money, your presence, and your gift. Try as you might. Let me ask you this question. You test this out this coming Sunday. See if you can sing the Lord's song in a strange land. And if you can't, then maybe, just maybe, you're in Babylon and you need to come out of it. I don't say this to make anyone mad or offend anybody. I love you with all my heart and I plead with you. Come out of Babylon. Come out of these places where everything's run by some stage manager, not the Holy Ghost, where the program is more important than Jesus coming in and doing what he wants to do. Whatever happened to the meetings where the Holy Ghost was in charge, where the Holy Ghost dictated what took place? Let's get back to that. Let's repent. Let's leave Babylon and let's go to Zion. Let's go up to Zion, the city of the living God. You don't need to weep when you remember Zion. Just go get to Zion. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let's go up to Zion together. Come to Narrow Way and worship with us, and we'll go to Zion, I promise you. There's a there's a hundred churches in this city that'll take you to Zion, that love Jesus, that are free, and love the anointing. I pray for you today, if you are bound and sitting in Babylon, that God would speak to your heart and encourage you and bring you out of Babylon and cause you to go up to Zion, the city of the living God, and experience for yourself the glory and the manifest presence of God again like you used to. God bless you, friend. I love you with all my heart. Come see me at Narraway. Friday nights and Sunday mornings, we're here. Our Bible school's in session Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, and Tuesday and Wednesday evening. We have meetings almost every day of the week. Youth meeting on Saturday, prayer meeting Thursday night. We're just going for it because we love the Lord. We love Zion. We love Jesus. And I love you. God bless you. Till the next time, see ya.